Hey guys, Daniel from Team Cree Bros here, and I am joined today with Cree Bros' own Alvin Funk. So, Alvin, you played the legendary Dublin Regional this weekend, and where did you finish? Sixth. Sixth place, you were playing... True Draco. True Draco. So you played True Draco, finished sixth place, it was seven rounds, you won the first five, yep. and then had two unfortunate final rounds. Very unfortunate. Um, so what made you decide to play Draco? This was the first weekend of the new list and Dark Neo Storm being legal. So, I mean, you have access to a lot of stuff. So what made you choose Draco as your deck? Well, um, the meta was basically Pendulum, um, it was also Salads, um, potentially mine, and True Draco just has a good matchup against all of them going second as well as going first. Um, made a few tech choices to make sure of that as well. Um, I was playing blind second Draco for the last couple months, and then since Pendulums I've decided going first is better, but um, the matchup against the rest of the meta is still the same, still prioritizing going first, so it's... Yeah, I just okay. stuck with the deck. So you were going first with this build, but you had taken a lot of kind of ideas from going second yeah. with Draco. Yeah, cool. I shifted from second to first now. Okay, well, we will just get into the profile then. Cool. Right, so standard mm -hmm. one Dynamite, uh, three Ignis, yep. um, two Maiden. Um, so the reason for two Maiden is I'm playing triple Amano Oahu. Um, so triple mono is necessary, I think, for going second against pendulum boards. Um, the Draco monsters you want basically just to tribute over spells and traps to clear the board going second, um, or sometimes, I guess, uh, in response to your opponent, but generally you just want the traps up more than the monsters, I think, in this yeah. format. Um, so mono is very important, so I needed that at three, so I had to cut one monster so I didn't break with too many monsters, but then... If I cut the Draco monsters anymore, then it just end up being I have nothing to tribute. So that's the reason for that. Yeah. And Ignis is more valuable than Maiden. Yes. Yeah, um, you'll see here. I'm also playing Waterfall, so that compensates okay. for Maiden. But um, yeah, Ignis is definitely more important on your turn. So um, then I'm playing Triple Diagram, Double Terraforming, pretty standard. <laughs> yeah. Um, upstart, two Duality. Um, I, I'm still between two and three duality, um, so I'm not playing Desires, so I'm not a big fan personally. Probably a better choice to play it, but I've had some bad experiences playing Desires in Draco, so never again. Um, so yeah, I just have Upstart and duality. Um, I have Triple Hard Mites, which is standard, Triple Disciples, which is standard, Triple Heritage, which is standard. Okay. So nothing too exciting with spells. Um, onto the traps, uh, standard Triple Apocalypse, uh, one return. Um, so double waterfall, um, so this is basically um, cutting the monster count, so I needed ways to get into monsters, especially when I cut one maiden, so having double waterfall is good. Um, waterfall is just handy for, you know, clearing your monster for afterburners, or uh, just clearing your monster in general for imperm, Baylor, whatever it is, um, and also just having that search. So in this deck, because of all the draw power, you don't want to draw monsters, so I'd rather replace the one maiden with two waterfall, and I can sack them and search on my opponent's turn. Um, mm. And because it's not once per turn, you can activate two, so opening two is fine. Sure. Um, playing three Rupt. Um, it is good. <laughs> um, debatable against the meta. Um, I'm a bit iffy on it still because before when I was playing Cherries, I found Cherries just a tad better, but because Cherries doesn't hit anything in Pendulums, um, Erupt is the one to go for for this event just to kind of test it a little. How, um, how do you think Erupt performed? Yeah. Would you try other cards in its slot or um i'm definitely considering things to swap out for erupt that's the only thing i basically um, took out cherries for erupt um mm -hmm. because you know having an extra deck and not having an extra deck basically um and i felt like erupt was good for a rogue and was kind of good as something chainable to like a pendulum board if they negated the first floodgate that you put up if you could mm -hmm. um but i still feel like it was under par so i'd probably take it out to consider something else but i'm, I'm not really sure yet i think sure. that's probably the the three cards that i can probably change now maybe take out one or two to see but most likely just cut it completely you could play two desires and an order yeah definitely not <laughs> <laughs> the order maybe two desires definitely not um there can be um so this is good going first against pendulums good going first against solids um, good going second against solids um, it, it's good in, in against a lot of decks just to kind of floodgate because um, I think Draco is one of the few decks that can actually live on one monster and still do things because they rely on the back row and 
Um, you can easily just clear your monster next turn if you want to. Um, but yeah, you just sit on the one monster, it's fine, and it's bigger than the majority of other decks uh, that can handle anyway. So, um, And then lastly, two strikes. So strike was um, also for the pendulum matchup. Um, just being able to flip floodgate, uh, bait and negate, and then hard negate theirs, and then they can't respond to that, and then you just clear their board. Yeah. Um, and also going for a strike was quite good. I would have liked to bump it to three, but um, I did want to try keep this deck at 40 cards just to see how it went. Mm -hmm. um, working with Draco isn't great, so uh, trying to keep it as consistent as possible without draw spells like Desires. Sure. <laughs> so that's that. Um, so that's the main deck, 40 cards. Um, obviously, extra no extra deck. <laughs> <laughs> right, so side, um, two anti-spell. Um, so going first against Pendulum, Striker... Um, Potentially, I don't know, anything else. Just anything to yeah, play Anything cards. to play spells, yeah. Um, triple Typhoon for going second against Striker, going second against the Mirror, Draco, uh, Mine, anything that plays Spell Trap, Star Face Up that you want to get rid of. Uh, even Pendulums going second sometimes can be good, but sometimes underwhelming. Yeah. Um, double Vandy's Fiend for going first against Salad and Pendulum. Um, yeah, I thought it was quite good. It clashed a little bit with a Mano. Because um, you have to designate your normal summon to one of the things, but still having it as an extra thing to normal summon is quite good. Um, on the, depending on the matchup, it was you know the strongest thing that you could have put out. And because a lot of people are playing back row hate, um, I think it's better to have some monsters that can hold the field for you. Sure. Um, Seer mode for going second against pendulums, um, thunder dragons, I guess uh, guard dragons. They weren't there, but you know still good because I'm playing going second. Or if I'm going second against people, I don't have any interaction. So I just need something that has removal, so this will be the maximum removal, and I don't really need the first normal summon, so it's fine. Yeah, you can just have two additional ones. Yeah. Um, and then Inspector Border for going first. Uh, so I basically side out two manos for two Inspector Borders and keep one in. Mm -hmm. um, so my theory on these was I kept the going first cards at two, because going first I'll be able to draw them, and there will be less interaction than like negates on board so I just kept them at two and then the, the going second things at three because I just need to draw them uh, yeah. at some stage without having to have a turn first. Um, you don't have as much draw power to get into them because your opponent has some sort of interaction. Exactly yeah so I just want it all as my sixth card like a sewer mode is my sixth card or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, well, preserve Presumably, preferably as like your fifth for Typhoon. Or fifth, yeah, for Typhoon, exactly. Um, yeah, I need increased likelihood of seeing the second, going second cards. Yeah. Um, then lastly, Swords of Conceding Light. So okay. this was because it's a continuous spell. Um, and previously, when I was going to gamers for locals, um, I did see a good few Thunder Dragon players. Just in case I was going against Thunder Dragon, this was a good way of kind of just kind of spot removing everything for a temporary amount of time, but then I, I'd be able to clear them while they're set, so I'm going to distribute over traps or whatever it is. Um, Apocalypse already kind of clears them, but that I have to wait a turn, wait for them to attack, or I have to attack, so... Yeah. Swords Continuing Light was a good one. Um, I think slightly underwhelming. It does kind of clash with Sphere Mode as well, but I think this is good if you're playing against Thunder Dragons and they have a feeling you're going to side in Sphere Mode. This is one to side in instead. Um, that mm -hmm. way, if they still... Summon two Thunder Dragons or two Colossus, you can just play this. Sure. Did you have any games where you set it in Swords of Concealing Light at this event? Um, I used it against um, True King Dinos at some stage. Sure. <laughs> um, literally just because I was afraid of the Quatlus. Um, because it, as much as this deck can handle negates, I still want to have ways to clear them just in case. Mm. Uh, I open a hand that has only one interaction or something. So having an extra thing just to flip everything face down. If they don't negate it, everything does get flipped face down. Uh, if anything is um, indestructible, you know, having it flip face down is also very strong for me. Yeah. So um, depends on the matchup. I did put it in for that and pendulums because it does burn and a, a negate for pendulums too. Um, mm -hmm. But I only ever actually saw it against Tricking Dinos and it also wasn't really necessary. Right. Would you consider playing something else in that spot? Or um, do you think it still has enough value? Because we've seen Thunder Dragon fall off the map quite a lot. So it's not really much of a concern at the moment. Yeah. The format could shift, but... Yeah, like, um, at this point, because Thunder Dragons aren't prevalent, um, I would keep it in only for Pendulums, because that's the only thing that's scary for me going second if I don't open a Mano, um, because I just have to fight through, well, like, four negates, essentially, two monsters, two spell traps. So 
Um, it is a bit tough to get over unless I open sphere mode, so having that extra one is okay sometimes. Yeah. Um, for now, I'm probably going to keep it in. Um, uh, I don't know if there's anything I would really change in the sides so far yet, because um, I'm still looking into it. Maybe the Vandy's Fiend. Um, as much as I want more monsters instead of spell traps, uh, it just didn't do enough for me. So maybe I just need to change the build, but that's the only thing I'm considering. Is um, there a reason that you weren't playing Demonic Stormforge? What's your opinion on that card at the moment? Um, so Stormforge needs to go with other cards, uh, namely Draco's um, or Van Lee's Fiend. And mm -hmm. I was playing Stormforth in the very first build of Draco that I was playing for locals that was going second with Cherries. Yeah. Um, going blind second means that you will always have use for one of the three Stormforths that you have. In the side deck, um, I felt like there's not many matchups where you want just one removal, and the one removal also requires another card. So it's like two card for one removal. Um, whereas for Sphere Mode, it's one card that gets rid of three, and Swords Can Seeing Light is one card that gets rid of any amount. So I felt like they were better. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, yeah, that was my logic. Um, in Blind Second, I would have played it, because Blind Second, just having that six card, drawing a Storm Fourth, um, being able to pop it with Demise is really good. Yeah. But Siding, I felt like in that situation, I never felt like I needed a Storm Fourth inside. Mm -hmm. And final question is, with regards to going second, based on what you saw this weekend, do you think going second is viable, or do you think with prominence of decks like Pendulum that you really do need to uh, be built so that you can take game ones? Um, Pendulum is the only deck um, that I've seen so far that made me want to go first. Um, because they put up multiple negates um, with... Um, Slam Angrates, so you can just activate spell, activate effect tribute, and like unless they negated the activation of the continuous spell, yeah. they burnt a negate for no they, reason. They have so. one hard negate. And that's exactly, it. yeah, so you can clear that. Um, Orca's kind of similar, they have Crescendo, which is also hard once per turn anyway, and they only would have one. So again, it's just another one back row that I can clear easily. Um, mm. Pendulum is the only thing that going first is devastating to try tackle, and unless I open a mano, I can't play. So... Mm. That's the only reason that made me want to go first. Um, I think if I can figure something out or figure out a build or uh, if Pendulum become really widely used, um, I might uh, work something out with a going second Draco with maybe main sphere mode or something similar um, with enough removal. Um, and then I'd be considering it. But yeah, until then, I think first just for that reason. Okay, cool. Well, any final thoughts? No, I don't think so. Um, I think Draco is probably a good deck in the format at the moment. Um, there's not much else, I think, playing... Well, for me personally, playing in the meta just means you need to be better than everyone, whereas if you play, like, Draco, you're essentially rogue-ish, um, and you can just kind of do your own thing. As long as you know your deck well enough, you can fight it. Yeah, Draco lets you kind of just play true stuff. Exactly. Um, cool. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. This is your third regional pop in a row? Yeah, I think so. I got all three mats of the season. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you will be playing Waterford this weekend? Uh, I'll be judging. You'll be judging. Ooh, exciting. Well, everybody, <laughs> wish Elvin good luck. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we will be back soon with more Cree Bros content.